I'm having trouble bagging him. There's a lot of resistance. His oxygen saturation is dropping. I'm going to take a look. I can't see anything. The cords are swollen shut. His pulse is dropping, guys. This doesn't look good. Grab me a scalpel and a bougie. The cricothyroidotomy is an emergency procedure that is performed on patients in respiratory distress, and where you, as the care provider, cannot obtain a definitive airway. That being said, the major indication to perform an emergent cricothyroidotomy is when you cannot obtain a definitive airway by orotracheal or nasotracheal intubation. Some reasons why you wouldn't be able to obtain an airway include a patient with a very difficult anatomy. patient with excessive amount of secretions in the airway, or physical obstruction of the airway by a large mass or object, or massive facial trauma. Take this man, for example, who's peacefully walking down the street. He's brought into your emergency resuscitation bay, and you attempt an intubation. I'm having trouble bagging him. There's a lot of resistance. His oxygen saturation is dropping. I'm going to take a look. But you're unsuccessful. His oxygen saturation is dropping, and now he's failing to oxygenate. You also notice it's getting more and more difficult to ventilate him with a bag valve mask. Now he's failing to ventilate. You're likely getting nervous at this point and thinking if you should try again. You attempt again, but you can't see the cords because the secretions are too much. What's next? Should you try again, or should you let someone else try again? At this point, time is brain, and the brain is starving of oxygen. The next best thing to do now is to grab your scalpel and cut. But where do you cut? Here's the larynx, and the superior portion of the trachea. There are a lot of structures here. Luckily, there are only a few structures you need to remember. The cricothyroid membrane is your point of interest. This is the membrane you will puncture and pass your endotracheal tube through. It's tightly situated between the thyroid cartilage superiorly and the cricoid cartilage inferiorly. Now pay careful attention how these key structures lie in the midline of your patient. That is the direction you will be cutting in, especially in an emergent situation. That's because there are some important structures that are found immediately lateral to the larynx. So now that you know your landmarks, what are you going to need to save this person's life? It's simple. You only need four essential things. Your finger, a scalpel, a gum elastic bougie, and a 6O endotracheal tube. If you have time, you can choose to clean, but remember, brain is time, especially if this is an emergent procedure, so cleaning is not really necessary. First, you want to palpate your landmarks. Use your non-dominant hand to palpate the thyroid cartilage. You could also feel for the laryngeal notch to orient yourself to midline. You'll want to next palpate the cricoid cartilage so that you can define the inferior edge of your target incision site. Because remember that the cricothyroid membrane lies between the cricoid and thyroid cartilage. Once you've oriented yourself, you could start feeling midline for the cricothyroid membrane, which will be the target puncture site. When you're ready to cut, Hold the lateral edges of the larynx so that when you cut through the skin and soft tissues, the larynx stays midline and does not shift underneath the soft tissues when you make your first incision. After each incision, palpate feeling for the cricothyroid membrane. You may need to cut a little deeper each time, but keep in mind this is not a delicate, gentle incision. Your incisions should be deep enough so that you can palpate the cricothyroid membrane after one to two incisions. Once you're through the soft tissue, rotate the scalpel 90 degrees and use the scalpel to puncture through the cricothyroid membrane. You're going to make small horizontal incisions across a membrane enough to fit your finger between the thyroid and cricoid cartilage and into the airway. This is where it could get messy. Blood may begin to pool into your visual field and you will likely lose sight of your incision. Don't panic. Remember, this is going to be primarily a procedure by palpation so there's no need to blot the field with gauze or suction. 
In fact, you could use the blood as a lubricant to slide your fingers over the landmarks to reorient yourself, and then sliding your index finger past the flanking cartilages. With your finger in place, exchange it with your bushi, aiming it downward into the trachea. Once you've made this exchange, you can now feed the endotracheal tube over the bougie and into the airway. For more information and learning material on cricothyroidotomies and other medical things, visit our profile on CodeHealth at codehealth.io slash medschool.